This video is going to cover both how to manipulate dates and how to create pivot tables to analyze data in Excel. So as you can see, we have some um, data here. We have a date column, a time column, the dry bulb temperature in Celsius, the dry bulb temperature in Fahrenheit, and the relative humidity. So this particular uh, data set is hourly for a full year. So it's actually quite large. It's 8,000 um, 760 items. So what we want to be able to do is both manipulate the date and do some cool things with pivot tables to analyze this data. So the first thing I'm going to do is manipulate the date a little bit so we can um, parse the data from the date. So I'm going to make a new column by right clicking on the B at the top and hitting insert. And I'm going to make a column just called the month. So what we can do is we have a date field here we can say equals month and insert the date field and what this is going to do is if we format it correctly as just a number it's going to give us the month and again to fill in all the way we can double click so you can see at the very top of our data set it's one and the very bottom of our data set it's um, in December 12 and you can see as it changes all the way down so what that's going to do is let us analyze month-by-month uh, -month data with our pivot tables. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a pivot table of this data. So the first thing we can do to create a pivot table is click the left, upper left corner where the, our table is going to um, of the data that we want to analyze is going to start, and create the and then hold shift and click the lower right corner. So this selects everything. Then we're going to go to insert at the top and pivot table. So now we see that the r table or range is selected for what we want and we're going to make the pivot table in a new worksheet. And now we're going to hit OK. OK, so now our pivot table is empty so we have to build it. So I'm going to show you a couple different things we can do with pivot tables. The first thing I want to do is what if I want to know the average temperature every month of the year for this data? So we could have done this maybe in the other sheet with a bunch of average ifs or um, other other type of statements, but that that would be very time-consuming. The nice part about pivot tables is it does that kind of stuff for you very quickly. So we're going to go over to the pivot table field list, and we're going to drag month into our row labels. Then we're going to drag the dry bulb temperature in Fahrenheit to our values. So now what we can do is this is the sum of the temperatures. So the sum of the dry bulb temperatures isn't necessarily helpful for us, but other, other data sets that might be helpful. So we're going to do value field settings here and do the average. And hit OK. So now what's nice is we can see the average dry bulb temperature. So the other thing we can do really easily is insert a graph of this. So we're just going to do a line graph like that. So now we have our month of the year and our average dry bulb temperature. And as you would expect, the average is higher in the summer. So that's great. The other thing we can do with pivot tables is we can copy and paste them. So if we want to keep this data table, we can copy our whole pivot table and paste the whole pivot table. And then we can change the parameters down here. So what we're going to do is now we're going to do it the time of the day instead of the month of the year. So let's delete the month field and um, actually let's put the time field in first and then we can delete the time then we can delete the month field so now we have another thing another um, now it's all the times during the day and the average temperature so let's go ahead and plot that again and see what that looks like so as you as might be um, be sort of obvious is that right before sunrise or early in the morning it's low average temperatures and then at the end of the day it's higher average temperatures so that's what's going on let's do one other thing let's go back to our original pivot table and let's put another let's put relative humidity in for the values as well so again the sum isn't very telling so let's change that to average so now we can see that our relative humidity stays pretty constant average around 70, 60 to 70 percent and the temperature really changes in this area. 
So that's sort of an introduction to both how to manipulate dates and to just get the months and also into pivot tables.